Cloud Guys, we're back. Um, and today we're gonna talk about a few abnormal colony conditions. Um, we have a quite interesting colony here, and then we're gonna move on and look at some of the signs and symptoms of, of other, other sort of various things that aren't exactly normal. Um, and sometimes you don't actually want in your colonies and you'd have to rectify the situation. Um, and we'll talk about how to do that as well. Um, but first, what we have here, uh, so this is actually a double brood chamber hive. Um, that we've just split apart so we can get into it fairly easily and show you what's going on. Um, earlier on, uh, about a month, month and a half ago, we've gone into this colony and assessed it. And what we saw at that point in time was the queen was starting, had just started to lay drone eggs in worker sized cells. Um, and that's kind of the first symptom um, of her just starting to get older, starting to fail. She's running out of semen um, and starting to lay unfertilized eggs uh, where she should be laying fertilized eggs. So that went on about a month and a half ago, uh, maybe just a little bit before that. And now we've got to this point here uh, and we'll go into the colony and what basically has happened is she's, she's gotten to that point where she has actually failed um, and now the bees are kind of reworking things uh, and trying to rectify the whole situation. So the first thing to note is it's about 23 degrees today um, and so the bees are quite spread out so they look like they're covering a lot of a lot of territory in these two boxes um, but it is actually not exactly a strong colony. So they might be they might be covering everything on the box but they're not covering the entirety of frames. So it's a bit of a weaker colony um, which is just something to note, but going through the colony, the first thing we, we actually are seeing here is what was kind of the tail end of the queen bee. So we have, it's just starting to get to be a bit of a spotty brood pattern. Um, and as I look into the box now, we have an even better frame ahead of us. So we'll go to that one. But kind of towards the end of her life, she was laying in a very sort of spotty brood pattern. So yes, we do have brood covering almost the entire frame here, um, but it's very spotty. There's lots of lots of cells where she's either missed or, or something has failed and the bees have cleaned it out. So that's kind of our first sign that, yes, she's gone, things went even a little further south than when we first caught her laying, uh, again, unfertilized eggs in worker sized cells. So we're starting to see spotty brood pattern. Upon a closer inspection, um, it's hard to see in a video, but we don't actually see any eggs in here. Um, so we know that the queen is no longer in this colony. Um, and what's actually started to happen, as we look a little further, is, well, not on this frame, so we'll pull it the next one. But again, we're just starting to see uh, the spotty brood pattern and no eggs in these empty cells or anything like that. I'll put that in and move on to the next one. But there we go. What we're starting to see is these bees, when the queen finally failed, uh, they kind of kicked into gear and started trying to rear their own queen. Um, so what we're seeing here is a queen cell that they've, they've produced uh, and another one here. Um, so these are all supersedure type cells uh, because they are on the face of the frame and not all hanging out at the very bottom of the frame. Um, and we can see they're actually, they're quite far advanced. Um, so if you look closely, it actually has a very papery type look to it. Uh, and if you were to feel that, it would feel very, very sandpapery, uh, but not so much waxy. So it's getting to the point where these cells are almost mature um, and the bees have kind of taken off that wax coating on the bottom of that pupil case. And now that the outside of that pupil case is actually starting to show. So they're quite far advanced, um, but just uh, once you get the feel for how large a queen cell is, um, looking at these ones, they are very small. They're kind of runty sized cells, I guess you'd call it. Um, and that again would be just because this colony is, is a little bit weaker um, than some of the strong colonies. So they, they don't have the resources and the population to really produce well-rounded, strong queen cells. So put that one in and keep on looking, see what, what we can see in this colony. So here again, we have a bunch more queen cells um, that the bees are working on. 
They've got cells over here, cells down below, cells on each side of the frame. But again, notice the spotty brood pattern and the lack of a heck of a lot of bees on these frames. Again, we see another queen cell down here closer to the bottom. Now we did notice on an early inspection as well that the bees had actually started to tear down some queen cells. So if you can see here, we have three queen cells here. They actually built them really close together. So we have two up above that are still intact and again have that kind of papery look to them. But down below, um, there's the bees have actually started to rip down this cell. Um, and the difference between a queen emerging and hatching from a cell and the bees starting to rip, rip the cell apart is the, the type of opening that you see at the, in, on that cell. Uh, if the opening was torn through the side of the cell, uh, it's a very obvious sign that it's actually the worker bees that have gone in there. Um, if a queen to emerge, were to emerge from one of these cells, there would be a very definite, smooth, small circular cut right at the base of that cell. And what we're seeing here is everything just being torn apart. Uh, there's little hairy bits of that pupil casing kind of thrown here and there. Um, very, not a very clean look to it. Uh, so that is basically a sign that um, the worker bees have actually torn that cell apart. Um, basically what's happened is the larva uh, wasn't fed enough or the larva was too old and would never develop a new queen. But the bees have sensed that this is basically a failed queen cell um, and torn that apart and been done with that. So we've almost, we've pretty much seen everything there is to see in this colony. Uh, there's no queen. Uh, there's evidence of when the queen, you know, in her final days, what, what she was doing. Uh, so right now we're, we're at a juncture. Um, so at home, uh, you could possibly let these queen cells all develop fully, hatch out. Uh, there'll be a bunch of virgins in this colony and they'll sort it out and eventually be left with one. She'll go out and mate and you'll be, and you'll again, kind of have a, a fully functional colony. Um, but if you have the resources, uh, the good, the, the best idea is to put in, uh, go through and destroy all these queen cells and then put in a queen cell that you've either purchased or reared yourself. Um, that way you're, you're more sure of the genetics that you're going to be putting into that colony with that queen. And what also is going to happen is when you produce these queen cells or buy them, uh, those queen cells have been produced and are large full strong queens uh, that will hatch out of there. These ones here, uh, they are a little more runty as we talked about, so they will generally produce a, a, a more physically inferior queen. Um, so that is also something to kind of keep track of. But we're going to go the route of going through this colony, destroying those cells and introducing a queen cell that we've reared. Um, she'll go ahead and mate and we've basically rectified that situation by putting in a brand new queen. So that's kind of, that's what what happens when you have a queen that's starting to fail and has gone to this sort of stage. Um, and those are kind of the two, two routes you can, you can use to kind of settle that problem. What's actually over here is signs and symptoms of chalk brood. So we don't, we don't actually have any physical chalk brood inside this colony. Um, we have evaluated that. But what you can see in the signs and symptoms of chalk brood are these little white and black mummies that have basically have, is failed brood that has been mummified by fungus and the bees so these are actually in the cells of the colony uh, and then the brood dies and gets covered in this fungus um, but when the bees finally get over <coughs> and are able to deal with these they'll chew them up and spit them outside the colony so very very good sign and symptom of chalk brood uh, are these little mummy casings that have fallen right out front of the colony. Sometimes you can see them in the front entrance of the colony uh, and we don't exactly see that here but there are lots of these little mummies just sitting out front of the colony. So we won't get into too much about what chalk brood is. That's, um, you can do more reading on that um, but if you just have a good look at what this looks like that's what we're trying to get across here.